I'm a life coach, a Christian thinker, a pastor. I also like to see myself as a model leader. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And I pray you will bless as you listen to this message right now. Thank you so much, sir. Please. Thank you. Now, this person says, how will a church identify the needs of its members? How do we give in God's way? I don't know who the we there would be the church or the yes, people. Yes, I think let's assume it's the church. That the church should give yes. in God's way. Yes. Well, in the early church, we find that the church gave for as men contributed to the apostles' feet. They brought all they had to the apostles' feet, meaning leadership. And the apostles stood from their feet and distributed to meet the needs. The needs were one, shelter, two, food. Mm. These are the basic needs. Mm. They have nothing to do with your greed. Yeah. Uh, however, at some point, the first major crisis the early church had, had to do with, had to do with <laughs> meeting needs. Because the Grecian widows were complaining that the church was favoring the apostles, were favoring the Hebrew widows. Yeah. Don't forget, they were yeah. Hebrews. Yeah. And some people came from the Hellenistic world, the yeah. Greeks. They got born again, they got saved, they were added to the church like the Hebrews complained that the apostles Yorubas are only meeting the needs of the Yoruba of the Yorubas, Yoruba widows. So the, it became a major crisis, yes, major. Yes. So, so Peter said, oh, 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 "Okay, you know what? We don't want you. Watch, watch me. We don't want you members to dishonor and disrespect us, clergy." Yes. yes. Unlike today, so there are some things wow. clergy should not be doing. Wow. So choose amongst you people that you trust. We will give them this business of serving food, mm. and that was how the first deacons were appointed. Mm. It was more of the pastors. Understanding the ministry of the word and prayers and not serving bread and serving meeting needs, welfare needs. Let's choose mm. people from amongst you. We will pray for them, mm. tell them to undo this business. Mm. And for you to know that this office is more exalted and elevated. And many times we, as clergy, get ourselves involved in things we shouldn't, like absolutely, politics, absolutely. like welfare, like this. So that's why people abuse pastors on social media today, because we've left our primary assignment dabbling into, into other things we shouldn't be getting into. Yeah. And, and, and I wish we could just go back and pull the brakes and go through scriptures and do what God has called us to do. Wow. Teach the word, pray for the members, and appoint people to go and do wow. certain businesses. And, and, and that, for me, would be great. So, for instance, if our church had a big school, I will not be involved in who goes to that school. No, 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 they're dickens. Let them be the ones that will choose. Mm. Because again, a pastor must not be found wanting. Wow. Or must not think you are nepotic. Ah, can you I... imagine? It's only Yorubas, only Hebrews that are giving things to in that church. I don't like them. Those pastors, they're not servants of God. And then you start having all kind of crisis in church. So wow. I, I, I think we should go back to the Bible, understand the letter and the spirit, and do it by the spirit. And clergy focus on those things. Exactly. Now, two things from what you just said, sir, that I want to just reiterate. If you're yeah. just joining us, you're welcome. The first thing is the fact that as a man of God, if there's stuff happening in church, those, those things happened in the early days, actually. Because we heard people complaining, how come it's my people getting food, your people are not getting food. The other thing is the, the story of Stephen actually stands out for me. Even though he was then um, anointed or prayed for to be sharing food, he eventually became someone that was reckoned with. It doesn't matter what you're doing in the house of God. Do it faithfully. Absolutely. And the Spirit of God will rest on you. Now... Um, I've, I've got just a few more. Now, this person says, why do we still pray, bind and cast when the Bible speaks of our claimed victories in Christ? Okay, this is a very important question. Very, very important question. Listen, there's something we call positional covenant and progressive covenant. In the spirit realm, yeah. as far as God is concerned, yeah. there's the finished work Done. of Christ on the cross of Calvary. That's our position. However, for us to see that thing, all the benefits manifest in our lives, mm. we have to pray them down. Even God said, your father in heaven knows all you need, yeah, but you still have you to lost. pray. Yeah. But as our victory in Christ is being sorted out on the, at the cross of Calvary. However, there will be challenges, watch me, challenges the devil, the world will throw certain challenges at you to know, to challenge you, mm. to test you, mm. if you know who you are. So now you have to now put your foot on the ground as I say, no, 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 that's not for me. No, the Bible says, no, the Bible says. Just like the devil tempted Jesus. If you yes. are the son of God, do this. He said, it is written. written. I want to test you. Do you know who you are? Are you sure you're a child of God? Those are the reasons why these trials sometimes 
come to our ways. But our job is to now show the devil, the enemy, the world that we know the word and that we will indeed manifest the victories mm. that is sorted out on the cross of Calvary for us. That's why we live our Christian life every day. We pray, we, we take communion service to reenact, to reactivate mm. those things that God has done for us at the Calvary's cross. And there are many things, many of our benefits, you need to leave them out. Mm. They won't just begin to walk out. The fact that, you know, your dad is a billionaire, doesn't mean just sit down there, the billionaires will come here. No, you've got to get up, go to work, go and take your inheritance. I said, Dad, where's my inheritance? Mm. And begin to live mm. with what God has given to you. Mm. Who you are in Christ is a position of what God has done for you. How you live that out yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis is something you must do yeah. through the word, through authority of scriptures and yeah. authority of the name and through yeah. righteous living. Yeah. Just live right and live obedience. So to I guess that's why... Thank you. So I guess that's why as Christians, you can still find two Christians living different kinds of lives. Absolutely. The same way you can have two children from the same parents exactly. who look very different. Exactly. So you have to actually claim what's yours with your father. Exactly. Reverend, I've got two more questions and then we're done for today. Okay. Now, the one question is speaking to the issue of vows. Vows. Yes. What does it mean to, to promise a vow, to pay a vow? Does it have anything to do with business giving? No, no, no. Vows, vows it depends on what you go by vow. Okay. A vow is a covenant work with God. Yeah. Listen to me. There is a main covenant that we are living to in now. It's called a dispensation. Where right now, as far as the heavens and the earth are concerned, mm -hmm. God and humanity from the Bible, mm -hmm. we are under the new covenant. Okay. Um, that new covenant um, was done by Jesus, is the mediator, the middleman, the owner of this new covenant. Okay. And he, he, he put that covenant in place with his own blood, like um, a landlord, exactly. The, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness the earth. Yeah. See, God as a landlord. The earth is the Lord's, Psalm 24, and the fullness the earth. Watch me. And the landlord over this duplex that you live, your father lived, your mother lived, yeah. our great grandparents lived, had written a different agreement, a tenancy agreement yeah. with the tenants. And so under Mosaic law, if you're going to live on my, in my property, my duplex, this is the agreement. Now, and, and it was quite tough. You must get home at 7, you must okay. leave at 8 a.m., you must not uh, smoke, no drinking, no this, no that. The moment you step, you throw things out of the window, I will cut your hand. Okay. Also, so that was a very tough agreement. So, so Jesus, the son, came and said, look, these guys are not bad guys now. Let's check the covenant and the agreement again. And, and so, okay, what I will do is, I want us to throw this covenant away, and okay. I'm going to write a new covenant, okay. so these laws will be in their hearts. And I will go down there to pay the price. But no, you can't do it. No, I want to do it, Daddy. How, how, do you know what it's going to cost us? Yes, your blood, yes. I want to pay for their living in this house. Okay. For the next two, three, four, five thousand years. So I will pay the rent for them. Okay. And that's going to be a lot of money. So it's going to be my blood. Yeah. So Jesus now paid the rent yeah. for living in his house on our behalf. So you and I don't pay rent anymore. However, Christ has that in our, the new agreement. Even though you guys don't pay rent anymore, it's now free to the dead. However, I say I have some laws. Oh. You must love me. Oh. Don't bring girls in at night. Oh. Don't do this. Oh. Okay. Those are my own rules oh, for you to live there. So the new covenant is a new agreement between God and humanity written by Jesus, signed by with his blood. He stands in heaven as our advocate. However, it's for us not to pay the price. He's paid it for us. But for us to enjoy the covenant, okay. we must love him, worship him, and do stuff for him. So that's what we don't have a new covenant. The same God, but a different covenant work with him. Now, for me, when I'm not living in that house, yeah. sometimes I, I, I just want to express my relationship with him. So I make a vow. Okay. My own vow based on that covenant and that agreement. Lord, uh, uh, this year, I like the way you've kept me. Uh, next year, I, I want to make a vow to continue to give me certain things that I've been enjoying. It's already there in the covenant. But what I want to do is that, Lord, I, I will try not to make sure I stray out of certain things you've written, but keep me off through this one year. I, 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 will pro I promise you this. I want to give you that okay. when you do that for me. So it's not placing me under pressure and it's self to make a vow. Initiated. It's self, it's self initiated so it's not asking us that no man if you don't make a vow i won't work with you no a vow is a, a, a statement a decision to show your love towards him listen i'm going to be taking a midweek series 
in the month of August okay. on loving God. Because I was telling my wife this one, I said, platinum love, gold love, ah, diamond love. Wow. Th there are different measures wow. of love. I found out that people love God differently. Differently. So that's where vows come in. Some people love God so much that they say, you know what? I'm not going to even do this. I'm not, I'm not going to touch a woman till I'm 18, till, I'm, till I get married. And, and Lord, if you strengthen me, some will say, Lord, I don't know, even if I touch a woman, you will still forgive me. But Lord, give me strength. <laughs> give me this. Give me that. So the vows are self-initiated. It's provoked and triggered by you yes. to express more of your love towards yes. him, to appreciate him. Yes. And like a covenant. So I do my own vows during communion service. It's just for me to say, Lord, thank you for what thank you do for me. For you know what? I, I, I promise you this, Lord. I, I make a vow. I make a vow yes. to do this and do that for you yes. by the end of the year. If my job is intact, end of the year, your job is intact, I will fulfill my vows. It's wow. personal. That's where first fruit comes in. So many churches preach it as a doctrine. Absolutely. You should preach it as a mm. vow. It's, it's not mandatory. Mm. If you feel, Lord, I, I will give you the first fruit of my salary every year mm. if you make sure I'm not fired. And every year, you come and say, God, this is between me and you. Mm. So it's not a church doctrine. It's not in the new it's covenant. An, it's, it's, it's a relationship. My, it's a relationship. Exactly. It's a relationship. Exactly. Like you and your spouse. Yes. It's a relationship thing. Yes. So you are telling him, because you've done this, I will do this for you. There are many of us that make vows to our kids, to our this. If my daughter makes first class, I vow to give you this. I said, Daddy, because of, look, you've loved me so much. By the time you're going to be 60 or 70, I vow. So all kind of pledges. What mm. vow means a pledge. Mm. Means a pledge. So mm. there's nothing wrong with vows as long as it's within the new covenant mm. uh, laws and rules. Thank you so much, no sir. Problem. I want to go giving. back to the topic of giving. Yeah. I've been in circles where this topic has come up. Um, I really mean to give God good offerings every Sunday. Yeah. But it turns out by the second week of the month, I'm broke. How can I solve this problem? And I really, I now feel bad. It's offering time. I'm wondering what to do. I, I think if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, it tells us that we should set apart our offerings. Paul mm. said, I'm coming to Corinth. Mm. Before I get there, I make sure your offerings are set apart. I want to come and collect it and give it to the weak church in Jerusalem. Mm. The day I found the word set apart, he was still traveling down. So he carried that offering and, and prepared. Put it, prepared. So the way for people that want to do that, and it's all about work with God and yeah. covenant, I will give you 5,000 every Sunday for the next. So I will set 20,000 apart so it's somewhere. There. It's, it's there. It's not mine. It's, yeah. This belongs to God. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to give offering based on my economy. Yeah. I give it based on what he has, I have received. Yes. End of the month, yes. 5,000 every Sunday. I put 20,000 aside. And end of the, every Sunday, I won't touch that. My touch is, I don't, I don't want to touch it. What belongs to him is it's, it's, it's my offering to yeah. him. That's how Paul taught us to give offering. Yeah. Set something apart. Wow. But however, if you're going to be giving wow. based on what you have in the pocket on Sunday morning, <laughs> some people can deliver to us how they finish all the money. They come to us and say, God, you can see. God, there's nothing here. But God sees your heart. It is not God sees that you deliberately. You see, we keep thinking we can, we can deceive God. God is not mocked. He, wow. He knows. God, you can see my heart. You see my pocket. There's nothing here. If it was here, I'll give you. There's nothing here. You emptied it yesterday. That's it. And on Monday, he's there. So how come on Monday it's always there? On Sunday it's Absolutely. not there. How come? Is that coincidence? No, that's not. That's intentional. That's deliberate. So, so again, <laughs> I, I think that has actually sealed it. Set apart your offering. Yeah. The fact that it's the second week of the month does not justify you not having Send something to give. Thank you, Reverend, for that. <laughs> now, um, this one, I think there was a part A you answered earlier. Christians in the early church gave all. Yes. Why are we finding it difficult to give 10% today? You know, well, <laughs> we're struggling with 10, in my opinion, because of one, we've been taught wrongly what tithe should be. Secondly, wow. we have not been taught to love God. You see, I, I strongly believe that the answer to all the crises in the yeah. church yeah. is love. Yes. And people love God differently. And, and that's a major issue that people don't find, we don't understand. When we teach the love of God, we teach it from one perspective. Can I tell you that one? God loved God and loves us. We never teach, do I have to, do I have to love, exactly. Yeah. Do I have to love him back? If I don't love him back, he still loves me. That's yeah. what we taught. And that's the grace that we taught. That's the grace yeah. of God that appeared to me. Yeah. Oh, God loves you, God loves you. There's no, there's no doubt in that. However, am I supposed to love him back? Yes. What is the greatest commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God mm. with all thine heart. Not that the Lord shall love you. No. And thou Jesus shalt love. Peter. Jesus and, was asking Peter. Do you thou me? Three times, me. three times. 
Yeah. Why do we do this a fellow that worked yes. with him for three and a half years yeah. and still asked him, do you love, love me? me? You and I have hit him before, but do you really truly yeah. love me more than this? this? So, so if you look at it very well, the problem is our love mm. towards him for him. And that's where the devil capitalizes. Because he went to God and said, does Job love you for nothing? That's what they did in the wow. church. They were so committed, they were so wow. devoted. That's what I call the platinum love. You know why? Everything I have and I own belongs to my wife. So I, I never think, am I going to give? I know. But there's some couples uh, that are married uh, and are not giving to each other. Because their love towards each other is not as hot, not as great. Maybe bronze. bronze. <laughs> and they still love their parents or their family members yeah. more. So it's about love. It's about love. When you love God, the way you should, the platinum love, nothing, you will, be, you will never struggle with Absolutely. You, you don't will even never. need to be freaked to. You will, exactly. You, you don't never. need to be freaked to. You will never. Can I challenge you out there, children of God? Um, the question that Jesus asked Peter, ask yourself when you get home, do you love him more than this? Why do you need a pastor to whine you before you, you know, before you give something? <laughs> yeah. It's something to think about. Thank you so much for that, pastor. Yeah. Now, hmm, should pastors be accountable to the members or even to community for the tithes and offerings of the members that they collect? Ah, <laughs> You can see me sitting up. I can see, I can see. And I want to tell you guys at home that that is a tough question. Perhaps the toughest question here tonight, <laughs> the toughest, should pastors be accountable to members or to a Dickens board concerning the offerings and tithes right. they collect? Let me tell you how churches run abroad and at home should run. Every year, we, you cannot be a church licensed in Nigeria without registering with Corporate Affairs Commission, mm -hmm. CSC in Abuja. Mm -hmm. Abuja gives you license to operate a church. Okay. Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist. Once you are licensed, your clergy, your purposes, your aim, everything is there stated. When you now collect offerings, it's a charity. When you collect offerings every year, mm -hmm. you'll be surprised, you'll be surprised. Every year, listen, every church is supposed to send in an wow. audited account to Abuja. Every year. Every year. It's the law of the land. The law of the land says... Every year, every church should submit an audited account to Abuja. It's a law of the land. Wow. Are we doing it? Are our churches doing it? No. Are they going to arrest mm -hmm. us? Certainly not. Why? We will call it church persecution. So, <laughs> <laughs> we will we call it church persecution. We will say no. So, now, if you don't submit wow. it to Abuja, the church should be accountable to a select group. Yes. I don't believe the church should be accountable to every member okay. of the church. That is not AGMM. Yeah. AGMM in business settings is accountable to your shareholders. shareholders. And the shareholders in this case should be the tithe paying members or leaders. For me, the shareholders in the early church were the elders and the deacons and the clergy that the ones you sit up with and you give an account of how much came in, how much mm. respect. We do it in our own church here in Futa, Foundation of Two Assembly. Every, every year, twice a year, after your report, mm. I call the kingdoms together. This is how much came in the last six months. Mm. This is how we spent mm. those monies on programs, on admin, on diesel, on pastor, thinking about pastors, our church office members. And churches should be accountable because the money does not belong to a pastor. Yeah. Pastors are trustees, meaning held in trust. We put this in trust, in your trust. Yeah. We are trustees of this organization. So we should not betray the trust of the people. But do we do it how we do it should be, uh, should be decided by each church. Not, not, there's no formula for how you give an account of what's coming in. Mm. More of these videos, just click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified once a video is uploaded. Listen to the program. I like it to subscribe. Subscribe and guess what? Subscribe again. Thank you very much. I'll see you there.